Hello again, everyone. Welcome to today's general interest seminar. My name is Jimmy Fu. I'm a shock therapy consultant. I started to learn uh, how to do GPU programming with Open recently, and I think uh, may be interesting and uh, useful to introduce this to you. Um, however, it's still at the introduction level, so I hope maybe one day I can talk more about uh, uh, performance and uh, more deep in terms of uh, uh, GPU programming with OpenP. Okay. So I think most of you, maybe all of you uh, know OpenP. So here give a simple overview. So OpenP is a popular, portable, and widely supported shared memory parallel programming model in HPC. So the API includes a set of compiler directives, library routines, and environment variables for parallel application programs. So the in interface on the API and is actually applied to C, C++, and Fortran. So the same type of specification will have the syntax for both languages. And uh, it's for smart threaded approach and it's quite simple and straightforward. So the biggest advantage is ease of use. So it provides the capability to incrementally parallelize a serial program. So I think most of you know MPI as well. So MPI is a dedicated memory solution, a distributed memory solution. So well is is a is a different approach. So it's a standardized. So it's a portable, and you have OpenP code. Lots of days. So you have a standard compiler. You can run it on any hardware. Okay. So here is the uh, a graph of the brief history of OpenP, and I took it from online tutorial. Uh, it's getting uh, complicated uh, from time to time. So it's originally originally proposed uh, in the mid 1990, and at the very beginning it was a four times four times specification and C plus and C plus plus is C plus plus so different. And the big things happened on two point five at that time they merged both together. So it's one specification applied to to both languages. And then and, uh, another breakthrough, and uh, is at 3.0 at that time, the task constructor was proposed. So <clears throat> the original plan for the OpenP was quite straightforward and simple. It supports general multi reading and it emphasizes uh, parallel loops. So I will have a, still have a few slides to, uh, uh, to review it. And then, and uh, the 4.0 and the target constructor was proposed. So this is intended to support for the accelerators like GPUs those days. So to support host device models. As you know, it's basically it's like a, an OpenP community and the open forum and uh, bring uh, a team of experts and uh, to have the specifications. However, it's largely to depends on the implement implementation of the compiler companies. So different compiler and have a different ways to improve it. And it's actually quite a delay when it's actually to apply it. So now this OpenMP has uh, currently is a uh, five point two. Uh, the virgin specifications has much more advanced functions added to this host device model. So make it very useful to do the real practical GPU programming. And in this days, maybe later this year from their website and OpenP 6.0 is going to be launched. So when OpenP was originally launched, the focus was on symmetric multiprocessing. So it's basically like a lot of thread with equal access to memories. I think in all the time and uh, we have and 
high hyper threading processes CPUs. So now this on our clusters, we basically go you write open B code uh, and one CPU or one core run as one thread. So it's actually it's not a light thread, it's like look like a heavy thread. So it's basically is a hardware we based on uh, hardware shared memory and uh, lots of days pretty much all loads are fat loads. So at least the 32 CPUs and the more than 32 CPUs are most uh, new clusters. So we're now you to make a lot of CPUs to run in parallel and open the code can perform quite good. And then the programming model is quite simple. It's a fork jump model. And uh, the fork is basically the code is always started as a sequential code. And then uh, when you uh, start that uh, uh, parallel and uh, open P parallel, and uh, the companion will say, well, the following is going to run in parallel and uh, by multiple threads. And then they will start a fork. So the master thread then create a team of parallel thread. And then we will start to do it. And uh, when that part and uh, task uh, are done, and then you will jump together and then we'll continue. So traditional and uh, typical uh, open B code is that looks is always a sequential parallel, sequential parallel. And the performance depends on the areas, how big the parallel is running, right? The more, the better. So this is the simple and the low parallelism. So sequential code is one line, is super simple. And then the original uh, open P, the the first construct is called parallel. So it basically where the terror component hit from here will open a team of thread. And the will do the job is by not just one thread or a bunch of threads, right? And how to do it, you just thread to do what? Uh, or you can program it, you can do the thing uh, yourself. And the finally, and uh, uh, were proposed for work sharing constructor and for or do for before trend. So then this will make the program much simpler is, you know, it's just uh, you use a parallel for, and then the compiler were smart enough or be smart enough to actually to distribute your, your this loop to a bunch of threads, right? And then in all the time, there's only the work sharing constructor are these three types. So the biggest one and the po mo most of it makes sense is the, the loop for the loop. And another one is for sections. And the sections is to say there's not a loop, it's maybe the small task sense and each will do different things. And then one is single is when there is a data race and cannot deal with it. You have no way to do it really in parallel and you just ask one thread to do it. And afterwards, they have more introduced more to do the loop constructor. And then say they have a SIMD and to do to parallel loop. And it's sort of like a vectorization thing. And finally, uh, there is a task loop. And the reason there is a loop, and simply you just uh, use the loop constructor, the compiler, not compilers, not the compilers are smart to to try to, to do the loop for you. Okay. So that's the biggest sort of thing. However, as we know, not all programmers they have loops. And the particular and the OpenMP at that loop side because they know the size of the count, so the compiler can do the job. However, the many things they don't know. Such like this, say if we consider a, a travels link. In this case, we don't know how long will the link will be and where to stop. So this type of things and OpenMP and uh, to deal with is to introduce the task construct. We have a task constructor and then and then we'll be hopefully to do this so-called irregular uh, code. And then the task construction is basically to support a irregular program and uh, it's basically like loop or loops. The iteration are not known at the compiler times, such as for the recursive algorithm or the things that like I showed up for the link things. And in that case, it's quite similar to the sections and the shield and the very early uh, 
and the slides. And then the task is not exactly will be even or maybe or may not. And in this case, it's basically it's one, one, one thread to work on one task, for example. And then this construct quite simple is OMP task. It will create a task and add a task to the queue. And then the master thread will basically do that type of things. And the other thread will come to pick up a task one by one until the job is done. So let's see, that's, a, uh, that's the big thing and uh, in for this type of parallelism. So for the list, just let the code just now, we stop, we start with a, a team of threads and then we have one master thread sales or one thread who pick up will do the task things. And for others, and each thread will come up to pick up a, 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 a list to work with until it's finished, okay? Now, we know is actually back a couple of years ago starting and our hardware is not just the CPUs, so it's the GPUs and the GPU will become more and more important. And the GPU is, is better and better uh, from all the times, right? So GPUs are made of many cores and they sometimes called computer, no, uh, computer units. Like we have right now on our clusters, we have V100, we have a100 will have more, right? Which will have H100 or some H200. So like V100, it has eight streaming uh, multiprocessors, right? And uh, so let's basically like they have 80 computer units. A100 has 108 computer units. And each unit has a 64 the processing element. So the GPUs from others, from AMD, they were a lot exactly the same, but uh, they are quite similar. They have lots of compute units and the process element. So if you put them together, like uh, if it makes sense for your code, like uh, A100, if um, 108 times 64 is closer to almost 7,000 process elements. So that for you to work with, and to do the parallel. So let's open P trying to uh, to, uh, to to hope the code will run on it. So let's the early, early, uh, early time and it proposed for the uh, host device model. So the basic idea is like this. So the execution of an open P program starts on a host. The host we talk about is basically CPUs and it may offload target regions to target devices. The target devices is GPUs, for example. So in, in principle, the target region also begins as a single thread of executions. So when target construct is encountered, the target region is executed by the implicit device thread and the encounter thread task waits at the constructor until the execution of the region completes. So if the task device is not present, say there's no GPU sitting with it. So the, so the job still need, can be done so by the host, by the CPUs. So if we construct, create a data environment, the data environment is created at the time this construct is encountered. So the data environment will be important thing is always uh, in OpenP. So I have a few slides to talk about that. So the first thing is to say the syntax for the target constructor is quite simple. So the target has a constructor you have programmer, let's even say OMP target. And the associated with it is what's going to happen by, the, by default. So we know there is a, a, in terms of memory access, so the host is CPU and the device is GPU, they have their own uh, distinct memory spaces. So how to uh, do data environment and how to copy data uh, to and from, that's open piece of responsibility. So it will use a, a, combine, a combination of implicit and, and explicit data movement. So at the very beginning where, well, you know, and when you the open piece set a target, that means the piece of code here needs to go to run on GPUs on device. So all the data need to be copied from the CPU, for example, the memory to GPUs. 
and let you blah, blah, blah. And then uh, at the end, so the data should come back to the CPUs from CPUs. So new slides will give it a, a bit more uh, uh, explanations and uh, easy, to, easy to understand. So the CPU, this is a GPU model. So the target constructor offload to a device with two rows, basically. The first is execution from CPU to GPUs and the transfer data to or from uh, CPU to GPUs. So when the middle the target, and then that means the job all need to do uh, on device. And uh, then at the very beginning, for example, in this case, uh, the user array and A and the B, and uh, the size, and the may have others, they need all the data were mapped to the device from CPU or to the GPUs. And then there were two jobs on the GPU. At the end, the some color, they have results will come back to CPUs. And then by default, so the static, uh, the statically allocated arrays will always come back. And uh, yeah, and then they will have a control will let you to do the data. So because sometimes the transfer data is the most uh, time consuming slow process. So some is not needed to copy over or some is not needed to, uh, to come back to CPUs. So let's follow data control. So the data control in OpenMP, they have, they have a, a, a clause of purpose that is called a map, mapping. So when OpenMP program begins, each device has an initial device a data environment, and then directive accept the data mapping attributes. So that determine how original variable or original array's data is mapped to a corresponding variable in device data. So there's always that so initially, what do you have? And then what is supposed to be necessary on the device? And at the end, you how to share it and how to, how to do it. So here is the controlling data with the map clause. And there is a very, uh, several types for you to program to control it. So this is basically to say, say it's basically uh, the arrays, for example, you have three of arrays, so like say C will be equals A plus B, okay? And then in this case, we'll say all, all these variables should be copied to device GPUs. So there's a two is basically doing that. So the two is basically on entering the region, variables in the list are initialized on the device. I use the original value and from the host, right? And the from is the opposite. From is at the end, it will copy back from the GPU uh, to CPU, okay? And the comma will together is the two and the from, is say will come you know, copy this, uh, array or whatever variables from the CPU to GPU and come back. And there is a other as well. So from here is basically your copy, basically A, B, C, three from CPU to GPU. And the only come back from the C because C is a resource. We don't want the A, B to come back. A, B is on CPU is already, you don't, if it's not changed, you don't want it to be updated and you don't want to copy it and you save your time, improve your performance, right? So further, you will give this, uh, take this slides from another uh, tutorial uh, online and uh, or in my own reference anyway. So further, we'll let you uh, to understand quite clear. So this is a uh, sub, uh, sub uh, sexpy is a, is a blast library. And uh, the simplest one, to do it, say from here, basically this is a loop. And we do this loop is on GPUs. So we start with a target. And then we we'll add a map close to it. So in this case, and with the two is basically, you have A and X and Y all from the host to the target to the GPUs, okay? And then at the end, you only have that Y is a resource that copy back to host. You don't want X to copy back. There's no, it's not this X is not changed, right? So this is give you, so if we do this, you add your data control. It's not just by the default. By the default, they will cover every, they will copy everything from host to the GPU. And at the end, they will, co they will copy both arrays back to overwrite it on the CPUs. 
So let's talk about it. So, so just now is basically say the offload from CPU to GPU, OpenMP proposed that target construct, uh, construct it will let you to do the job. However, let's uh, basically target construct the transfer the control flow to the target device is sequential, it's not a parallel at all, and there is a synchronous. Uh, so you have to do the parallel, but that's the, that's the purpose to uh, for OpenMP. So you need to do it, and the programmer, you need to know which part you want to do it in parallel. So this is basically OpenMP separate off node and the parallelism and to different things. So you have to explicitly create a parallel regions on the target device. And uh, there is, a, because we have the work sharing, there is also a few useful subset of OpenP features and for target device, such as GPUs. So because GPUs has data and computer units and uh, can work as a light thread and the world existing that work sharing constructor will still work. So we'll say that the first approach. So the first approach and uh, is the idea is basically you don't need to do anything in OpenMP. You just uh, make use of that uh, traditional uh, parallel thread solutions. So let's say fork John solutions. So let's basically, you know, is uh, when, when the host the diagram will give you a better idea and uh, what uh, the characters there, the sentences here means. So the host thread, and when I hit that target, meet that target directive, you just say, okay, all my jobs here. So the loop, for example, has to do on the GPUs. Okay, the were on the GPUs. And on the GPUs, it will give you GPUs is basically, well, we'll do it sequential. How you say, oh no, it's sequential, it doesn't make any sense for me. So you will basically use that uh, parallel four, and then that uh, initial device thread will work as a thread will open a team of thread. And uh, each, each like a, a, a light thread will try to work on your loop by multiple computer units on the GPUs. So this uh, idea is, uh, this is not uh, anything new and uh, there's no, well, this will certainly work and uh, how good and uh, or not, I don't know, right? But at least it works. So this is the first approach and uh, it will is transfer control of execution on single device thread, only one team of thread work on the loop, right? And then for example, and uh, back to this code, uh, and this example code is here, we just show that it's the target and the mapping. And in that case, only one thread is still the code, it will run in sequential. And then I run now, and right now, come back to the parallel four, and SMID is another parallel solutions for parallel, parallel four. And this code will run in parallel on GPUs. And then this is GPUs will, create a team of thread to execute the loop in parallel GPUs and use the code. And again, if I use a lot of example here, and this is a, a simple example to calculate pi, uh, use that uh, uh, approach and, uh, and uh, one type of simple approach. And in this case, and uh, you can simply use, say, change the OpenP part to be target and the mapping because this is the sum is that uh, uh, it's shareable and uh, it's it's connected. So you have to you have to uh, move it back and forth, and you can use that loop. Loop is uh, is another uh, parallel approach to parallel loop. It's really relatively new work sharing. And the reductive reductions always make sense. So in this case, is this part is doing on the GPU, and on the GPU, and then will open and basically this is your parallel loop on the GPUs. This code will run as well. Okay. So this is the first approach. However, this is not a, uh, the main purpose in OpenMP to work on uh, GPUs. 
So openly, and uh, because this is only because it's only run on one team, right? And the GPUs has many, many computer units. So you can have many, many teams. So this comes with the OpenMP. So they proposed that teams construct. So teams construct a similar to the parallel constructor on CPU. So it will start a league of teams. So each teams in the league start with one initial thread. So like a, a team of one thread. And each team is and can work on one and computer units on GPUs. For example, and we'll show that later on later slides. So threads in different team and uh, cannot synchronize with each other. So they need to be teams need to be on the target, otherwise it will may not make sense. So that's one thing, and then another thing they will have a, a more powerful is a so called work with a team is dis distribute constructor. This is a, not is a, for work sharing. It's similar to that for uh, constructor for the work sharing for loop. The distribute is work sharing for loop, and uh, distribute is sharing uh, the loop among the teams. So loop iterations are work shared across uh, the initial thread in a league. And then while the schedule is static or whatever, it's quite similar to the four constructors. OK, so in this world, the diagram will give you a, a better idea. So it's where, in the first sense, where, you know, target is for the offload your tasks from CPUs to GPUs, right? And then what comes to team? Team is basically, is want to say, you open uh, a team of uh, computer units, right? You may want to make more, uh, to use more, or more core GPU cores in that sense, okay? And they continue with distribute. And distribute is basically when you have a loop, for example, this loop will be done among the teams by different teams, it's not just one team, it distributed to different teams. So let's let team constructor and target the team constructor and the distributed constructor work together. So let's transfer, transfer executions and control to multiple device in your thread. And then it work sharing, work sharing loop across like, uh, different teams. Okay. So the number of teams is actually you can control and, uh, and you can decide how many teams to use or you can by default or you whatever you set up in the Slurm script. So that's the blah, 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 understand, okay. And then we put them together, as we said, just now we know we have the parallel four still works. So this will have a, a more pictures and try to parallel in a large scale. If we put them together, it's called multi-level parallelisms. So we say to say we have a target and we target, we have a bunch of teams, a group of teams, a league of teams, and we distributed say workload among the teams. And with the teams, as we said, we, we, we saw from the, uh, from the slides before, and then you can use the parallel four for example, further to, uh, to work uh, your, your lobe, for example, on a team of, uh, of computer, uh, of light threads. In this case, and each unit has a bunch of process, process elements. Each can work as a, as a thread. So this transfer excuse multiple level device, right? And the work sharing cross the first work sharing, for example, the cross initial the teams. And uh, additionally, when each with each team and the loop can be worked on a team of threads. So I can give here it's uh, so this is the basically uh, the idea in OpenMP that the host uh, device model. And uh, then a simple example here I can give to you, for example, that uh, uh, we usually use it as an example for parallel programming or MPI and OpenMP, the 2D uh, head uh, equations. And then each point, the changes or on a grid or depends on itself, its value, and then the four uh, 
uh, labels, right? Uh, so there's a what's that called? We call the five point uh, sterile or st uh, steroid or something. So I don't know. <laughs> Stay sterile. And uh, then, you know, it's basically is a, is a lobe, it's a typical lobe, right? And your update values is basically depends on the four labels there. And then it's the two lobes to get the job done. And the open code and the MPI or the implication will be very simple as well and very straightforward. And then it's just one line and then you parallel for reduction maximum, you, you do that uh, to, to compare the errors. And in this case, when the, this will talk about CPUs. So when the code come here, will be open uh, a team of threads. It depends on how many CPUs you want to use. And then your data, uh, or data loopable work will, will work, will share it by a team of threads. And then at the end, we'll get the results. And we want this piece of code to work on GPUs. And then what you need to do is quite straightforward as well, simple as well. In this case, so for example, I want the first lobe to work on a team of uh, GPUs, computer units. So you have teams you distribute and you get to max. And then that's basically when you hit here, or all the job need to be done on GPUs. And then first, you will open a team, a league of teams first, and you distribute your workload to different teams first. And the first thing with the team, and then you continue to uh, do the work sharing for the work sharing for loop. And then each team will work on the, the second loop, second loop, for example. So this is working this way, and then this code will work. Okay, and then this code actually work quite good. Okay. And then we put it together, I think I put it as a summary. And uh, this is from that uh, uh, tutorials uh, on supercomputing 23 and the talk about uh, the OpenMP talks. So yeah, I think this uh, diagram is quite, it's quite good and uh, it gives a good summary for this OpenMP approach for, for GPUs. So it's basically with, you know, with the host, say, uh, it's CPUs. And the first thing is you need to specify its target, its strong target to get offload, to get onto a device. So your job is going to do on a device. And then on device is parallel, you know, use the teams first. And then you, you construct to create a, a league of teams with one team as thread on each computer unit, it's on GPUs, for example. And then you also can distribute, always use distribute. Just construct to assign blocks of loop iterations to teams. And then furthermore, you can use a parallel for uh, SMID and uh, to run each block of loop iterations with the team. And uh, it's actually on the GPU's case, will be on the processing element. So this is the whole picture and the idea and uh, and uh, for the OpenMP to program on, uh, on the constructors to on GPUs. And then in recent five and the 5.15.4 specifications, OpenMP added uh, more advanced uh, functions or that uh, constructors for uh, more practical programmings as well. One of them is they have more control on data. Say they like they have a target data and uh, it's create a device data environment and uh, excuse the constructor on the same device. And then the target constructor specified that the region is executed by a device and uh, encounter task weights for the device to complete with whatever. So it uh, has more details. It has a talk to enter data for the data at the very beginning, what's that? And then they talk to exit data. So, and also they have a talk to update. So they can have, you can, at some point you can update your data to make the data on your CPU host and the GPU and the device and uh, consistent or on the same page or or if they need to do one or not. And then uh, 
how big the team to use, you can you can get the team uh, team numbers and the team size, and you can define and uh, multiple devices, not one GPU. You could be able to do more more GPUs, uh, multiple GPUs, and then you can specify it. So let's uh, let make it uh, more practical in coding. So for example, this this code doesn't make any sense, but it's just say. So just to show you, uh, OpenP has more functionalities and uh, could be able to help you to do a much better job. So likely where you have target, you have dark data, you have device. So, so here, for example, the device zero, and maybe you can have two devices. You can say zero dewalt and one dewalt or something like that. Uh, you can have and uh, mapping and coming all together. And then you target device say zero, like ask zero to do this pala pala. Or maybe you can have ask one to do some other things. And you can do say update uh, from this, these variables and uh, and to on, on this device. Or you can you can do further more. And then they have more uh, the other things they have is uh, have many memory controls. So like uh, you define the memory controls. So maybe make it uh, more efficient because this uh, host and the uh, and, uh, and, uh, device mode, uh, the bottleneck is uh, the data transfer. You know, the CPU and uh, also GPU, the process is, is, is very fast. However, uh, the path link to the CPU to GPU uh, is slow, much slower. Right, if it's a PC, a card, whatever channel, whatever, it's slower. So data transfer is always, is always a, a problem there. So if you can control under the memory management or control the data management, that's easily then for the uh, for the control for the improve the performance in OpenMP. And then uh, the final thing is, uh, you know, because it's all component directive, and then it really depends on the quality of the components. And uh, yeah, some components implement, uh, maybe trying to implement as many as possible, and some components it doesn't. So right now, and the GNU component uh, did quite a good job and uh, uh, pretty much work uh, for, for most of them, the Intel compiler and the Clay, a lot of compilers, maybe Clay compiler seems uh, did more than other compilers, but that's uh, something we still need to to explore. Okay, I think that's uh, uh, all I plan to do for today. And uh, then, you know, the OpenMP website has lots of information there. And it says, well, OpenMP 6.5, it's going to be released in 2024, so let's see. And there may be have some more technical issues there. And then I have uh, some slides uh, are talking from online tutorials, and they are referenced here. So uh, you can, if you are interested, you can also go there, and uh, you know there are lots of online tutorials there. So here I'm just give you. Uh, conceptual and the introduction. And the hope at some point I can uh, study more and really compare and talk about the performance and the tooling of real and uh, OpenP code. Okay, thank you.